Hello Internet and welcome to Historical Headlines for the 3rd of January. Britain allies with France, betrays Russia. Shocking. We are specifically in 1815 during the Congress of Vienna. The Congress of Vienna was the great gathering of the grand and powerful nations of Europe set up in the aftermath of what they believed to be the final spasms of war during Napoleon's reign to set up the new borders and new power balances of Europe following Napoleon's fall and France's return to monarchy. Of course, as we know, it didn't go quite as the people in the Congress expected, as halfway through it, Napoleon escaped from his exile slash imprisonment on the small island of Elba, returned and reclaimed the governance of France, once more expelling the House of Bourbon for a while, leading to the Hundred Days and eventually the Battle of Waterloo, which interrupted quite thoroughly the Congress of Vienna and in fact, in some ways, saved the day from the major crisis we were about to cover. Because naturally, the various great powers in the meeting had their own ideas for what they wanted to achieve. Britain and Austria basically already had everything they want. Britain had never had any kind of territorial demands on the continent, especially after the king's personal principality of Hanover had been delivered back to the English crown, and Austria had already secured its hold over most of Italy, which was its primary territorial wants, and none of them, for instance, wanted any of the territories from France itself, only wished that France would be broken from being a overweening national power that could create havoc in Europe, such as it has done from the time of Louis XIV. All was not well in the Congress, however, and to give you an update on the situation, as it stood on the 3rd of January, where things came to a head in 1815, here is our time-travelling correspondent, hopefully with more clothes on than usual, Tim Sageson. Thank you, studio, though I would advise you not to try to oppress my sartorial choices. Now, as it has been clear since the meeting began back in November, there has been great friction between the former allies of the Napoleonic Wars. Russia and Prussia both won territorial gains on behalf of the former smaller kingdoms which had allied with France. Russia wants to annex all of Poland, while Prussia wishes to take over the entire kingdom of Saxony, which had, of course, allied with Napoleon from the beginning of the war, and take it into their own domains. This has been opposed by Britain and Austria. Both of them has no territorial gains they wish to push, but they fear that at least Russia, if they take the entire Poland into them, will be too powerful a threat for the rest of the European nations to deal with if they decided to be an aggressive foreign national power. The way they have dealt with it, apparently, is that today they have signed a secret agreement with France. France, who was otherwise only at this meeting as penitents ready to hear their punishment, for the actions of the revolutionaries and Napoleon in the last 20 years, have allied themselves with Britain and Austria, forming a new center line of power in Europe. With these three powers together, Prussia and Russia will have great difficulty getting their opinions through, and I am certain it will create a massive amount of resentment in Berlin and St. Petersburg over the actions of the British and Austrian Turks around that will see them remove the wartime alliance and instead ally with the power that should have been defeated and been out of the running for grand power of Europe for the foreseeable future. To deal with such a diplomatic turnabout, we have requested comment from the emissaries of all of the major powers. And let's go first to Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington. Lord Wellington, what do you feel about those who say that Britain has committed a grave miscarriage of justice by allying themselves with their ancient enemy France in order to go against their recent war allies of Prussia and Russia. I do not think I have any need to talk to journalists who do nothing but spread scurrilous rumors. Be gone, scribbler. How rude. Well, in that case, let me go to you, Mr. Metternich, Arch-Chancellor of the Austrian Empire. What do you have to say to the allegations that now that you have gotten what you wanted, no one else will be allowed to receive anything? Ich habe keine Kommentar. Verschwind, Schweinhund! 
Well, this is not going super well, I would say, since everyone is apparently really rude in this particular meeting. Let us try to go to Talleyrand, Napoleon's old foreign minister, who is now doing the same job for the newly installed King Louis XVIII. Monsieur Talleyrand, what do you have to say to this diplomatic turnaround? Well, I am a very skilled diplomat, and I will, of course, do what is best for everyone, so I can see that everyone is getting the things they want, especially me and La Belle France. Now, otherwise, a piss-off, notorious, naked person. I am honestly starting to feel I'm being culturally oppressed here for a second. Also, a rude Frenchman. I am deeply shocked to my core. However, there is no need to talk to the Prussian Foreign Secretary, as everyone knows that they are basically the lapdogs of the Prussians at this convention. So instead, let us go talk to the Russian Foreign Minister, Count Nesselrode. Count Nesselrode, what do you have to say to this stunning turnabout which has seen your country isolated amongst your former allies? Partitioning Poland is a Russian hobby. I truly do hope for the peace in Europe no one is going to oppose us on this. Also remember, journalist, in Tsarist Russia, press freedom means freedom from you, the press. Peace off! Well, it seems like I'm not exactly going to get my Pulitzer from just interviewing people in this particular video. Nonetheless, there is little doubt that this turnaround and this secret treaty is going to turn the entire meeting upside down, and we can only wait to see what will be the results for the future of Europe. Back to the studio. Well, thank you Tim Sageson, hashtag notorious naked person. In the end... The conflict didn't turn out quite as bad as has been feared. The Russians and Prussians realizing they would be facing overwhelming pressure from the now Western-style alliance between Austria, Britain, and France, with the various uh, smaller states that would support them simply because of the money they could get out of those three powers, and the fear they would have of aggressive expansion from the East, eventually backed down and presented a compromise that allowed Russia to take some of Poland and Russia to take some of Saxony, but not enough in either case to cause a major disturbance of the power balances. And of course, before things came really to a head and the various powers could start fighting each other for real, Napoleon escaped from Elba and gave them all a focus point for their anger, at which point they all immediately came together in a grand alliance, including Royal France, by the way, against Napoleon as a person, not against France. Worth noticing that the Battle of Waterloo, while while, of course, Napoleon had a French army, was not actually fought against France. The entire Seventh Coalition was formed of five great powers of Europe, specifically against the person of Napoleon. Say what you want about this man, not a lot of other people have had the five greatest powers in the world of their time form an alliance specifically to get rid of them. However, with this going on and with the various powers finding themselves together again following the compromise and especially following Napoleon's return, the rest of the Congress actually functioned in something resembling a certain degree of harmony and the power balance and the territorial seedings that the Congress worked out actually managed to secure peace in Europe for almost 70 years following the meeting. Not to mention that it hammered fast after thousand years of warfare the alliance between Britain and France which still holds today and which in the end was what gave victory to the Western powers in the First World War and of course to a certain degree allowed them to fight at least the beginning of the Second World War. Anyway, that was historical head Headline for the 3rd of January, Britain betrays their allies to get overly friendly with France. Very shocking indeed. I hope this has been of some interest to you. I shall return tomorrow with a new historical headline. Until then, I have been the Sage, and I wish you all a very happy day.